Hey guys, Casey Stutzman here. We're going to talk today about something I like to call false mobility. So what this really breaks down to is being very picky about what is supposed to be mobile and what is supposed to be stable. So we're going to look at a squat for an example. Now with the squat, I want to see how mobile the hips are. However, sometimes we see people squat and their head and their shoulders get super low to the ground. It might look like they're getting low and they feel like they're getting low, but we're having too much movement in the spine and not enough in the hips. So we're going to start looking at the screen on the left. So as you can see, go through the squat. Now I get down to that point right there. You can see that I have totally lost that shin to spine angle. So those are not at all where they're supposed to be. They're not at all in line. And then you can kind of see the depth of the hips off the ground. So I really just get to the point here where I'm actually just a little bit above parallel. And you can see where the knees are compared to the hips. But my head is really low, the shoulders are really low, so it looks like I'm getting low, and then it, for me it feels like I'm getting low because my eyes are closer to the ground. Now if you look at the example on the right, we hit that same squat, but now we're keeping that spine and shin angle nice and tall, and they're also going to be parallel to each other, so we have good, good squat, we have that posture tall, so my head and my shoulders are higher off the ground, however, if we look at the hips, Look how much lower they are. So now I'm actually below the knees. So be, I, I look maybe a little bit taller in this one and my head's a little bit higher off the ground, but I have much more mobility and range of motion in the hips. So when looking at complex movements, be careful of false mobility.